I got my C100 Mark II early in January 2017, so I've had it now for just over a year. This is not a review of a C100, I did one of those a while ago. This is more of a, how have I found the camera and do I regret making this choice and should I have gone with a different camera instead? Well, we'll start off with the ergonomics and they are so much better than any DSLR I've ever used or the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. The side hand of a top handle, so much more comfortable to use and having the viewfinder on the back of the camera in sunny conditions, it makes my life so much easier. Something that I didn't realise the significance of when I first started looking at this camera is the built-in ND filters. They make your life so much nicer. It means I don't have to worry about raising the shutter speed or carrying around a variable ND with me all the time. And I can always have the nice shallow depth of field you get with a larger sensor. Another feature I didn't realize the significance of was the autofocus. I have been amazed by Canon's dual pixel autofocus system. I do still manually focus some of the times, but whenever I have the camera on a glide cam or things get very fast paced, I can just turn autofocus on and let the camera focus for me. It's really accurate and that's even more incredible when you think that the newer Canon cameras, DSLRs and cinema cameras, have an even more advanced dual pixel autofocus. So you can tap on the screen and then it will lock onto focus and it can do face tracking with a variety of different lenses. I haven't used the XLR imports on the camera top handle as much as I thought I was going to, but I imagine that if I did more broadcast work then I'd use them a lot more but it's certainly nice having the option if I ever need them. Now, the two things that I was most worried about with this camera was the complete lack of 4K, and also that it's only 8 bits and that the internal image is rather compressed. Well, firstly, the 4K hasn't been too much of a big deal. Even at 1080p, this camera still captures a lot of detail, and with my current editing computer and storage situation, handling the 4K workflow would be a bit inconvenient right now. In the future I want to move on to 4K cameras and 4K workflows, but that's maybe later on this year or next year. And as for recording codecs and colour depth, I haven't really had many problems there. The 8 bits have been enough most of the time, I only occasionally see colour banding, and the camera seems to be very efficient with its compression. Plus, if I want a higher quality codec, I can always record externally to my Atomos Ninja Blade. That gives me 10-bit ProRes, although as the output is only 8 bits, the 10-bit codex is a little bit wasted. But still, that's good enough for most situations. It has been lovely to have proper slow motion. The 650D records 720p sort of blocky stuff, and the Blackmagic Pocket has no slow motion whatsoever. So to have slow motion but to similar quality to the normal 24p recording, very nice indeed. And as I have mentioned before, color science, spot on. I found that the C100 has allowed me to work quicker than I used to with my DSLR or Blackmagic and I've actually started using zooms a lot more. I've bought two new zoom lenses this year, the Sigma Art 24-105 to f4 which I'm filming on right now and the Sigma Art 18-35 to f1.8. They've both been really good lenses. I might look at upgrading to Canon L lenses in the future but for now these are definitely good enough. So that's about it for my thoughts on the features and user experience of this camera. Moving on to the other cameras that I looked at when I was considering buying the C100. I looked at two different Blackmagic cameras, the Micro Cinema camera and the Ursa Mini. Neither the 4K or the 4.6K, I don't know which one I would have gone for. Now with the Micro Cinema camera, shooting 60p RAW does sound pretty cool but the data rates from doing that would have been massive. And from what I've seen of the camera, it's not really designed to be a camcorder or a cinema camera. It's more aimed as an action cam or for drone use. Certainly I would have had to have rigged it up with more external accessories, even more than I had to with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera I had before. The Ursa Mini models on the other hand were a lot more tempting, but what did it for me was the lack of overall low light strength and the expensive SSDs and massive file sizes. I was also quite interested in using autofocus on glide cams and in other situations. And the Blackmagic cameras aren't really known for being the industry leading in autofocus. As I mentioned in the last video, the Pocket Cinema camera did put me off buying another Blackmagic camera a bit. The main camera in my mind that was competing with the C100 was the Sony A7S Mark II. Clearly this has happened with a lot of other people and they have gone with the Sony a7S, as you can see from the popularity of the camera. And it does look like a really good camera. Internal 4K, unbeatable low light, and the file sizes aren't too big either. It also has 
usable-ish autofocus, but in the end I went with the Canon C100 Mark II, partly because I really just love the image and also because of the ergonomics and other features too. My last two cameras had been a DSLR and a small mirrorless camera, so I really wanted to step up into something more like a proper cinema camera, which this is. Something that looks big and professional. I know looking big and professional isn't the only thing you should look for in a camera, but it is nice when I'm filming with this because people always know that I'm videoing things and I find that they don't stand in front of the lens too often. I also noticed that people seem to take me more seriously when I have this camera compared to when I have a DSLR or a Blackmagic Pocket. Several times I've been asked by passers-by if I've been filming the news. I don't know if they're being serious or not and I haven't actually filmed anything for the news, but I'll take it as a compliment for the C100 Mark II anyway. Anyway. I didn't really consider the GH4 or GH5 too much, but I didn't seem to offer any real strengths over the other cameras that I was looking at. So I do not regret buying this camera at all. I think it was a great decision. The only other cameras that I reckon I would have been happy with would have been the 1DX Mark II, which is more than a thousand pounds more expensive than this camera, or the 5D Mark IV. And I'm glad I went with the C100 over a 5D Mark IV. The 5D Mark IV would make an amazing B camera, but as my main primary camera, I really wanted a big cinema camera. So far, I've had a really good experience with the Canon cinema camera lineup, and I'll probably buy some more cinema cameras from Canon in the future. If you found this video helpful, then please consider leaving a like and subscribe for more videos, and I will see you later.